Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to do some basic HPC on CoCalc. More particularly by HPC I mean using Fortran and Slurm on a computer with a lot of CPUs to compute things. CoCalc has a um, notion of compute servers which let you run extremely powerful um, VMs you pay by the second. And one of the images is called the HPC image, and it has the Intel HPC toolkit and Slurm all pre-configured and ready to go, um, along with uh, other tools. So I'm signed into CoCalc, and I can click uh, my projects and then select a compute server. Also, there's a new feature you can go down here, and there's like a little template system you can click on the HPC Fortran compute server, and then if you click to select it, and then uh, choose your project, boom, you'll be in CoCalc with that compute server ready to go. So, um, but if you just open any CoCalc project at all, and you're clicking around, if you click on servers, you can then click on create compute server, and then to get going, either click here where it says HPC Fortran, and then select that template, um, or so it looks like it's already selected. So HPC, select that template, then the bottom changes. Alternatively, you can have any configuration at all, and then you can click here and then select this particular image. This image includes Slurm and the Intel HPC toolkit, G4 Tran, and lots of other related tools. Okay. Um, this H3 machine that you get by default when you select this template, this is, um, according to Google, their best machine for doing HPC. It's highly optimized for HPC. It has 88 CPUs with one CPU um, equaling one core, so you really get parallelism with a full 88. Memory is 352 gigabytes. Um, and it's an extremely good high quality machine for HPC. However, it also costs $6.43 an hour. And if you're just going to go through a um, tutorial to kind of see how things work and get things going, there are much, much more affordable options. So let's um, look for a machine with, which has eight CPUs. And I'll go with, uh, let's see, we have an N2D high CPU eight. That's 32 cents an hour, so much cheaper. And if I click up here to switch the provisioning to spot, then it only costs nine cents an hour. Um, the issue with spot provisioning is the machine could get killed without warning. Um, this could happen in a few hours or even a week or two. You don't know how long it will be. Um, when it gets killed depends on maintenance and demand. And it also might not be available at all. Um, I do, for my own personal work, very frequently work with these spot instances. Often I'm developing CoCalc itself, and um, if the machine gets restarted every once in a while, it's fine for such a huge savings in cost. Um, so I'll, I'll go with that. Another thing is you can change the region and um, that can impact the cost as well. So instead of nine cents per hour, let's switch to US East five and then it's only seven cents per hour for this uh, machine with eight CPUs or vCPUs. So we'll go with that and I'll leave everything else, uh, the defaults except here I'm going to uh, make a fast local directory and that's so that I could just illustrate how you can work with files that are only on the compute server and that are not synced over the file system uh, to the main project. Uh, this can just be a little faster and cleaner. Um, on the other hand, you have to be careful to uh, that that data doesn't get deleted. If you delete the compute server, then the data in the local directory also gets deleted. Um, I'm going to leave this in. I want to I want to have DNS because I want to demo using JupyterLab and VS Code as well. You might like editing code with VS Code. Um, you might like to run the terminal there. And if you're familiar with VS Code, which a lot of people are, that can be a great way of working on your code instead of using CoCalc's interface. Both of them are nice in different ways. Okay, so let's start the server running. Okay, so we're using the N2D high CPU um, instance type in US East 5A, and it's booting up. This will take about one to two minutes, and as it boots up, there's various sliders that will appear here 
or progress bars that will appear here showing um, the progress. We already have an IP address um, allocated. And you can see some information when you hover over this about SSHing to this compute server. By the way, SSH obviously only works if you set up some sort of SSH key. You can set up a global SSH key that will be available in all compute servers and CoCalc by clicking on account and then going to the SSH keys tab and adding a key here. You can also add an SSH key um, under, I think, settings, and then you scroll, where is it actually? Oh, right here, SSH keys. So you can add an SSH key here, and then you'll be able to SSH into the compute server. Um, although you have to add the key and then start the compute server. If you add the key after it starts currently, you'll have to restart the compute server. Oh, by the way, it's completely started up. And when it's started, if you want to watch like the console, you can click on serial for serial console. Um, and it will show you the console log. You know, you can see like the boot messages flying by under Linux. The compute server itself is running Ubuntu 22.04 right now. Okay, so it's all nicely up and running. Now let's go to the file explorer and I'm going to switch from the shared resources. That is the default CoCalc project. Now there's a lot of files laying around, just kind of messy. So I'll delete those. Um, so let's switch from the shared resources to our brand new compute server. Okay, there we are. We're now on the compute server. So we're, we're seeing the files on the compute server. And I'm going to go into the demo HPC directory. And I'm going to make a file, which I'll call binary tree f90. So this will be an f90 file. And I'm going to copy and paste some code into it. If you look at the description of this video, you can see where to get the code that I'm copying in. There's a link to it. And it's just a, a little tiny program to um, illustrate binary trees in 4chan. Okay, so we'll save the file. And now I want to compile the file. So I need a terminal on the compute server. So I'll click plus new. And because I've selected the compute server, that's just the default. And then I'll click Linux terminal. And then, yep, that's what I want to do. And notice it's um, in the upper part here where it's blue, it says that I'm on the compute server. This is how you control where the terminal runs, on the shared resources or on the compute server. If you run on the shared resources, then you have much more limited compute power than on your compute server. Also notice there's a blue bar across the top of the terminal, which again reminds you of where you're running. You can see the HPC image is uh, what we've selected. And if you click on this blue bar, then you see all this information about the status of the compute server, how much it cost. Um, if you click sync, that will sync files back and forth between the project and the compute server. And finally, there's a menu right here with three dots, and that lets you run various applications, see logs, change options, get help, um, change other settings, and anything else you need to do. Okay, so let's compile our code. So the intro, Intel Fortran compiler, Let's run it on our code. Um, it says something about something being empty. So let's see what that's about. Oh, I think I need to save the file to disk properly. Oh, something is funny regarding saving the file. Okay, it looks like the file is there now. Yep, there's the file ifx binary tree f90. Okay. So it's now saved to disk, and now let's run it. And there it is. Um, there are a number of different compilers available. You can also use G4Trans. So let me remove a.out, and then I'll use G4Trans instead to compile binary tree f90. And now again, we can run it. So we have two different binaries. Um, next, Notice that this says Fortran Slurm Intel HPC Toolkit. So you have all the HPC Toolkit stuff. You also have Slurm pre-installed and configured to work with whatever number of CPUs your compute server has. If you type, for example, top, you'll see that if you type one, that there are eight CPUs in our tutorial because that's um, what we selected with our compute server. Okay, so I'm going to use Slurm. Oh, I'm stuck in my top here. Ooh, oh, suddenly not responding. 
I wonder if the spot instance just got preempted. That's a, unlikely, but it can happen. Uh, nope, I'm just being a little impatient. Everything's fine. Okay, so I exited out of top, and now I'm going to run, um, I'm gonna use srun-n8 dot a dot out. And this is going to run our binary tree program eight times at once using slurm. And it just did it. And notice that um, it has normal end of execution right there. So if we do grep normal end, we'll see all of them appear in the output. Okay, so we also have slurm pre-installed. So that's most everything you need to know to get going with the Intel Fortran compiler, writing Fortran code, and running it using Slurm, which are some of the standard steps you would use when um, doing HPC. But let me show you a little bonus, which is how you can use VS Code and JupyterLab as well on this compute server. So let's click on the blue bar, or we can click on Servers, and then notice there's these two little links right here, which are also available in the menu right here on the upper right. So first let's run VS Code. So we click this button, VS Code, and what this does is it installs the latest version of VS Code, which takes like three seconds. It then launches the VS Code server and points you at it. And here we are. Um, you can now open a file. So let's look at the demo HPC directory and we have our binary tree file and let's just open it. And here it is. Um, notice that it's not doing any nice syntax highlighting or anything special for Fortran 90. And that's because I haven't installed any VS Code extension to explicitly support um, Fortran 90. Um, you can also easily get a terminal by just doing this. And then you have a terminal on your compute server and you can do things like ifx binary tree f90 and compile your program. Let's search in the extensions to see what the options are regarding Fortran. So a language client for Fortran called Fortran. Um, that looks fun. And then VS Code interface to the Fortran language server. That also looks relevant. Um, this one has 22 downloads. This has... Uh, this one has a thousand, so let's give it a shot. Apparently, Fortran is not a popular environment by people using VS Code, but um, it's now installed. And now let's see if our F90 is any better. Yay, look at that. So now we have, just by installing Fortran in VS Code, we have syntax highlighting. So that's much, much nicer than what we had before. Okay, um, the other thing I wanted to show you is that you can use Jupyter Lab just as easily. So there's nothing particularly Jupyter um, friendly configured here, but Jupyter Lab is another nice environment that's used a lot in scientific computing. And with one click, you're up and running. You get a nice terminal. We can do the same things we were doing before. Running that demo file. Um, let's see, there's a Python kernel. I haven't pre-installed a you know, Fortran kernel or something like that for interactive Fortran work. I'm not even sure if there is such a thing. But if there is, you could easily install it, presumably. Um, but you can at least use Jupyter and you know, do all the standard kind of Jupyter things. Like edit code. So there's lots of different interfaces that are extremely easily accessible to you via a compute server on CoCalc. Um, let's see. The other thing, if you use the main CoCalc interface, in addition to real-time collaboration, you have extremely extensive AI integration, like large language model integration. So for example, let's say you wanted to write a Fortran program, um, I'll call it primes.f90. So doing something with prime numbers and number theory, well, Fortran, that's not really its forte. And I also haven't, um, I took a class in Fortran in 1992,
but I can't remember 4chan at all after uh, 32 years. So I'll click the AI assistant and say, hey, um, please show, uh, can you write a 4chan 90 program that outputs the prime numbers up to 1000? So let's give it a shot. So you click that and then over here, let me move myself out of your way. You can see that it's trying to write a 4chan program using GPT-4 to implement the sieve of Eratosthenes and output our code. And then it also explains how it works. So first I'll click copy, paste it over here, boom, save it, go to my terminal. So you save it again, go to the terminal, and now let's give it a shot. So when we look, we notice there is a file primes. We can do ifx.primes.f90, and then we do a.out. And indeed, it did uh, output a bunch of prime numbers. Let's see if there are 168. There are, so that's a good sign. And now we can you know, look at the code. Um, there it is, that looks great. So maybe we can try up to 100,000 just for fun. I'm gonna try running it again, or compiling it again, and then running it again, and it's totally working. Yes. Okay, so that, um, it's, a, it's just a nice feature, and you can do lots of other things using this, like um, you can highlight everything, click AI Assistant and ask it to, you know, to just whatever you want. Um, you can ask it to do all kinds of things like add comments, fix errors, et cetera, et cetera. And there are a whole bunch of different AI models that are available. Okay, so we're almost done. Just a few other notes. If you click on upgrades, you can see all the prices for things you've bought related to this, like involving AI and so on. So um, doing that little thing with GPT-4 cost us 1.47 cents, so between one and two pennies, so it's very affordable. Um, the compute server itself has so far cost us uh, zero cents, or no, sorry, two cents, and if you hover over it, you can see it's really 1.6 cents, and then there's essentially no network usage that's been detected so far. So that's it. Um, so the total cost for this whole tutorial is about three cents. Not bad at all. Um, now that we're done, um, because I've created a bunch of files that only exist on the compute server, I have a couple of options. Uh, I could just turn the compute server off by clicking stop, or I could deprovision it. If I deprovision it, the file contents are just gone, whereas if I turn it off and the files stay there on the compute server. So I will probably deprovision it, but one other thing you can do is just copy your files off of the compute server back to the main project. So if I do, for example, um, maybe I want to keep this primes function, I can do copy, and then I can copy it from the compute server to the main project, to the shared resources, and I'll just drop it in the home folder there. Okay, and now it's up here in the, um, oh, I have to sync the files so I can see it, because I'm still browsing files on the compute server, but after I sync files, it should be here. Uh, well, actually, if I switch to the the main server, I should see it. Uh, there it is, Primes F90, so there it is. Okay, so uh, finally I am done. I'm going to take this uh, compute server, I'm going to deprovision it because I don't need it anymore. And there it goes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I hope you do some high performance computing with CoCalc. Bye.